Welcome to Decide to Move podcast, where top experts share tips and strategies to grow you from where you currently are to where you are destined to be personally and professionally. Now, here's your host, author, speaker, business strategist, CEO, and founder of Decide to Move, Monica M. Bijou. Thank you so much for returning for another episode of Decide to Move podcast. And today I have with me a three-time published author and a professional mental health clinician. I'm super excited what she's going to bring to us because she's going to share her own story and journey of how she made a pivotal shift by having defining moments. How are you doing today? I have Leah Forney with me. I want to call her Forney because I love it sounding French like my last name. But we're going to go with her real name. Hi, Leah. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you, Monica? I am good. Thank you so much for joining us. Can you share with the audience where you're uh, coming in from? Yeah, so I am originally from New York City, but I currently reside here in Maryland. Okay, nice. How long have you been living in Maryland? Almost two years now. Okay. Okay. So what do you do exactly? Like what um, is your job and, and what do you do? So I am an intensive in-home um, mental health professional. I work with children and adolescents basically doing um, coping skills, behavioral skills. Um, a lot of my children have like ADHD, autism, just a variety of different mental health issues and so I help them learn the coping skills learn the tools um, necessary to um, just be better yeah well and what got you into that profession <laughs> so when I started in the field eight years ago I thought I could fix people and so me coming from um, pretty much the dysfunctional um, upbringing, I, I was like, I'm going to go into mental health because if I learn these skills, then I can fix my family. And then eight years later, I have learned that um, my job is not to fix anyone. My job is to give you the tools and kind of guide you in the path to fixing yourself. So, Yeah, I was just going to ask you that in your journey of fixing other people, what did you discover about yourself that you said, okay, here's some adjustments that I have to make? Yeah, oh, I discovered a lot. So I think one of the biggest things I learned was that um, my story was very similar to other people's story, which helped me to realize that I wasn't alone because a lot of times we can go through things and we think that it's just me. Um, and then you hear stories of other people, whether it be clients or, uh, or other professionals in the field who kind of like, no, I went through that too. No, I got the dysfunctional family members too. No, my mom. And then it's like, oh, well, thank you for normalizing my dysfunction. Thank you for making me feel like that I am human and that wasn't just me. Yeah, but one thing that's always huge and I always share with people, each person's experience, even though it sounds similar, impacts them differently, um, especially as they're going on their journey. What were some of the things that I understand that you wrote a book about a lot of your your uh, things that you went through. Um, but what was some of the journey that you had to overcome uh, in your own personal life? Yeah, so I'm the daughter of two addicts. Um, my mom and my dad both didn't raise me, so I was raised by my maternal grandmother. Um, my mom has battled with drug addiction since I was two. Um, my dad has had battled with alcoholism up until the day he passed away. Um, and so just growing up without really a mother and father, I, I struggled through relationships, struggled with feeling abandoned, um, feeling like nobody wanted me. And so it, it truly showed up in like the way I connected with people. I was very guarded as a kid, very angry as a kid. Um, I remember having a conversation with my grandmother and she was saying like, she used to worry about me and my anger because she was like, I always got into fights. And then she was like, either you were going to end up in jail or something worse happening. And so, yeah, it took me a very long time to trust people because I just felt so unwanted. And then even when I did trust people, it was hard to be vulnerable um, because I always lived my life feeling like, okay, you like me today, but how, how long before you stop liking me? So it was always those thoughts in the back of my mind of like, how long before the other shoe drops? And so it impacted me greatly growing up. 
Yeah, and you know, and I find that as a, a therapist myself, I often find that. And one thing that I always share with people that anger is the outward, uh, it's basically like the outward symbol of what a person's feeling on the inside. Like people can see anger, right? And they yeah. can identify anger, but they can't identify all the little nuggets or all the things around it. So I always say like an umbrella, when you look at the little spokes that holds an actual umbrella together, you have like disappointment, you have sadness, you have hurt, you have pain, and all these other emotions where anger show, it's kind of like what people see, but they yeah. don't understand what's underneath that layer. And so um, it sounds like you've actually, just from the little bit we've talked about, that you've gone through your journey of working through a lot of those layers. Yeah, definitely. I think it, it, it took me a while. So, I mean, throughout my childhood, I, I did, I was angry a lot, but writing was an outlet for me. Um, I always wrote. Uh, my grandmother reminded me a, a few weeks ago about how I used to pin poems to like Santa Claus and and God as a kid that I never even remember doing. Um, so writing was always an outlet, but yeah, like it took me a while to get to the place where I could let it go. Um, and it took a lot of deep, like working with a therapist, my own spiritual walk with God, um, and just coming to the realization that, you know, my parents are who they are um, and learning to forget like truly learning to forgive them for not being there, not being the parents that I wanted them to be. Um, but even with their absence, I still had a pretty decent life. And so as an author, you know, of course, that's a like a business and entrepreneurship all within itself, being an author, being a writer, uh, having to connect with people. How did that cause a, a disconnect for you when it came to connecting with other people and, and really getting out there and having people to support you? Yeah, it, it was hard at first. So when I, when I pinned my very first book, Unapologetically Me, um, back in April 1st of 2017, that was the first step of me coming out of my comfort zone and, and really like letting the world in. So that book really details my, my mother and I relationship in this like love hate relationship that I have to my mom you know and I think what really started to open me up to connecting with people was when I had readers who went through similar relationships with their mother like reach out to me and say oh my god I, like you wrote me like that was my life this is what I went through and just thanking me for actually having the courage to talk about this dynamic that's what was like the first step in saying okay I can be comfortable in my truth because that's truly what the title of my book said, unapologetically me living, walking, and owning my truth. And so when I got to the place where I had made peace with my past, I had made peace with what has happened and got comfortable in my truth, then it became easier for me to open up and connect with people. That's great. And then what was your second book? Well, the first one was called Unapologetically Me. Yep. And so I, I want to make sure that I put um, in the show notes the link so that way if people are interested in reading your uh, books, they, they can find it easily. And so what about your second one? What, uh, what came out from that one? So the second book is called Courage to Win, um, Igniting the Winner Within. That book came, so every time I write a book, um, I'm a nonfiction author. So I always write based solely on what's going on in my life at the time. And so Courage to Win came at a season in my life where I felt really defeated um, and felt like um, I really didn't know what my purpose was. I was just questioning everything. I was questioning like, God, do you really hear me? Are you, do you really want to use me? And so I happened to be watching um, a clip on YouTube and the person that was on there, he was talking about just having this courage to win. Like, it, if you really want to be a winner, know that it takes courage to like keep winning, right? To, even when you feel defeated, even when you feel discouraged. And so I prayed and I was like, okay, God, where do I go with the second book? And that's when Courage to Win came because at the time I had to find courage to just keep winning and keep having this winner spirit, despite the fact that life was knocking me down at the time because I was going through homelessness. 
and uncertainty on my job and all these different things that were happening and I felt defeated. How did you find the courage to win? What was some of the, the if you can, like our, with our listeners that are saying, oh my gosh, that's me. Um, what things, like if you can give a tip or two, what things that they can actually do to get that courage to actually say, I'm going to win? Because as a, a lot of my listeners are people who are making pivotal shifts in their life. And especially with everything that's been going on in the world and is going on in the world people definitely need that courage to win spirit. What are some of the things that you highlighted in your book and that you um, mind sharing with us? So I, I definitely relied on my relationship with God. Um, I stayed in church. I stayed reading my word. I stayed in prayer. Um, so that was one. I, I love vision boards. Um, so I'm big on just making sure I had a vision board, goal setting, um, I'm big on those things because I, I, I truly believe that a, a goal without a deadline is just a wish, right? So if I don't set concrete deadlines, then I'm just going to be hoping and wishing that this thing actually happens. So just getting in the mind frame of setting goals and then finding people that I could trust, right? Having that circle of friends that I could trust to be vulnerable with, to be, um, my prayer partner or my cheerleader or just that encouraging person when I can't, can't encourage myself because sometimes we can get in life and it happens and you feel so down that you don't even have a word to uplift yourself. So just having that group of friends that know how to say, Hey girl, you got this. So, Hey, you got this when you don't even feel like you got it. And that's super huge and important. I always say surrounding yourself with like-hearted, like, you know, minded people the people who are going to push you and help you continue to grow and develop and not the ones that, you know, like the crabs in the bucket constantly pulling you down. And every time you try to get a leg up, here they come. Where are you going? Mm -hmm. Kind of thing. Um, so that's great. And so um, your third book, which is exactly what your title is about, um, what we're talking about today is those defining moments, mm -hmm. right? Going from a tragedy to try, you know, from try tragedy, I just want to make sure I get it from tragedy to triumph and then to destiny. And I love that title because of the fact that that's kind of what we go through. We go from, you know, finally getting up, like you said, right, the courage to win. And you've now, you triumph, you, you got up. Now it's like, now it's time to hit that destiny to get to the journey. You're finding your purpose and, and going from there. So let's, let's get it deep diving into that. What, brought about you writing this book? Yeah, so Defining Moments was probably, I wouldn't even say was, is probably one of the diff most difficult books I've ever written. Um, it details my life from 2018 up until recently, um, where I literally buried five loved ones in a year. Um, it started with my fiance who passed away the day after Mother's Day in 2018, unexpectedly. And so when I started writing Defining Moments, I was literally still going through my grief journey. And I remember hearing God say, I need you to write this book. And I'm sitting here like, what? Like, you want me to write a book while I'm still grieving? Like, bad timing, God. <laughs> and um, it just didn't make sense. But then I, I always take comfort in his word that reminds me that his ways are not my way. So Defining moments is literally about being at a crossroad in your life make, and having to make a decision. Um, when, when the title came to me, I thought about the image of being at a fork in the road. So you have like two different ways you can go. And so on one way, you can either stay in comfortability and stay in fear and doubt and what's familiar. And then the other way is this very unknown place but it's going to require you to like grow and develop and, and trust the process and trust God. And so I literally was thinking about what that season in my life looked like. And that's what it was. I was at a fork in the road where God was truly saying, make a decision. Are you going to stay in the land of familiar and comfortability? Or are you going to trust me and go down this other path? And so I made the decision, of course, to go down the other path and trust God. But in the midst of going down and trusting him, I also had to trust him throughout my grief journey. So I buried my fiance. And then I had four months after that, a very close friend of mine was murdered. 
And then it seemed like every four months it was a loss. So then my dad died and then another close friend um, committed suicide and then my father-in-law passed. So I was going through all these different losses, still working. I uprooted my life. I was living in South Carolina with my fiance at the time. So I uprooted my life, moved to Maryland where I didn't know anybody. So I was in this foreign place and I'm like, why am I here? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, why do you have me here? Um, but in the course of all of that, like I watched God just take me through this journey of really discovering destiny and really him showing me like, as I began to trust him and trust the unknown and trust the things that didn't make sense that he started to reveal little by little why he placed me in Maryland, why this book needed to be written, why um, it was important. And so I talk about in my book, there's a chapter on how I had to learn how to be to others what I needed. And that was difficult because again, coming from a person who struggled with being vulnerable, struggled with trusting people, I had to learn how to be to other people what I needed. And he would test me in that because I remember um, at the job that I was working with at that time, I was working with adults and a lot of my adults were coming in with grief. And here I am, I gotta encourage you, I gotta support you, I gotta tell you all these things. And on the inside, I'm like dying because I'm like, I'm grieving too. But he taught me that lesson of sometimes when you're in the midst of your defining moment or in the midst of your storm or in the midst of that uncomfortable place, you got to be the very thing you need to others so that it comes back to you. Yeah, I like that. I'm actually going to take that as a quote when I'm, you know, putting uh, your episode out, be, you know, be what you, what you need. Because oftentimes people don't understand what that looks like. And it's like, um, we become victims of our own circumstances and we stay stuck in that victim mentality. And it's like that biggest part is how do you get out of that? How do you get unstuck and get out of that victim mentality? Um, for people who don't believe in God or believe in a higher power, it's important for you to find what you, like who you resonate with, um, whatever your spirituality, whatever your religion is, find what is going to help push you to that next level. Don't stay stuck yeah. in that place of victimization and making everyone around you miserable because of the place that you're in so because what we tend to do is we push people away and the reason we do that is for three different reasons right one of them is to protect ourselves from being hurt or to protect other people or to um, basically shield everyone, right? To shield, you know, ourselves or, and those around us. And so uh, oftentimes we pick the wrong modality um, to make that happen. I've actually taught people about, you know, oxytocin and cortisol. When you're stressed, cortisol is released and oxytocin is too, but which drug do you want resonating in your body? The good one, right? Which is the oxytocin. So um, I love the journey that you, you talk about and, um, finding your defining moments literally in every, your whole entire life have been defining moments but you continue to push and I love that person that I love people that are like that like you know take circumstances and situations and turn them into something like you know take those lemon and make them lemonade right yeah. it's a lot it's a lot deeper than that um but you did it and that's to me that's something to absolutely be proud of if no one's told you I'm proud Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's definitely been a journey. Um, and I think that one of the things that I also mentioned in my book is the importance of support um, when you're going through defining moments. And I talk about um, support being a two-way street. So a lot of times, I know for me, when I was grieving, I just knew that my friends, my loved ones knew what to say and what to do in that moment. And so I would get frustrated when they didn't know what to say and what to do. And so God taught me a lesson about support. And he taught me that, that support, you know, definitely requires one, you communicating what it looks like, right? Because mm -hmm. yes, we say the cliche things of, you know, oh, I'm here if you need me and all the things that we say when someone's going through something. But I had to learn how to communicate it. I had to learn how to say like, you know what, today's just not a good day. Or, you know, 
this is how you can support me. So I know one of the things me and my friends came up with was like a code word. And when we learned, like, I would text them, like, cold blue, and they would know, like, okay, she needs to talk, right? Um, but then the other side to that was being open to the support and being accepting of the support because there were times where here I am isolating, right, and I'm on Leah's Island, and I'm screaming, nobody's here, nobody supports me, nobody cares. And God is like, that's because you keep pushing everybody away. <laughs> So I had to learn this valuable lesson of what support is. And it took friends of mine saying to me, like, yo, I'm trying to be here for you, but you keep pushing me away. And here I am thinking isolation was a good thing. So like you were saying, like, I'm isolating because I don't want to be hurt, but I also don't want to hurt nobody else. And it was causing more harm than good because my friends were feeling like you're shutting me out when I'm trying to truly be there for you. And so I had to learn, communicate what it is that you need and how you need it, but also be open and willing to receive the support that you say that you want. That's, that is so powerful. I hope a lot of people go pick up that book because that's what so many people need, whether they're grieving or they're in that process of, you know, making a, a shift in their life or something happened where it took them off of their, their normal path and they had to redefine themselves because we oftentimes I see people do that, right? They push people away or they isolate themselves. One of the things that I, my number one thing that I teach my clients that I work with, I say your number one job is to teach people how to treat you yeah. in every circumstances, and whether it's a relationship, whether it's an entrepreneur relationship, whether it's whatever, your number one job is to teach people how to treat you. Your second job is to find out what they need and how you can support them. Yep. When, when, it's, when that is the focus, when that becomes the way that people communicate, it makes a big, huge difference the way that people show up right? Because we don't know. None of us came with manuals. I don't remember when my daughter was born that she came with a little booklet next to her. And I'm like, okay, so what temperature I need to wash her? And how often does she, I didn't see any of those things yeah. with her. And as adults with trials and tribulations and different journeys that we've gone through, especially like your, your stories are, I mean, like, I love you being vulnerable and sharing that part of you, which lets me know the work that you've gone through when people have gone through things in their life, they don't think the same each year yeah. from the time of, from 2018, when all those um, grieving moments happened, you are different Leah than you were even last year. And unfortunately people will continue to try attempt, I should say, talk, handle you, talk to you, work with you the same manner. You're like, wait a minute, a new chapter in my manual. It's time for me to, educate you on who Leah is today. And so I always tell people your job is to create your own manual and make sure that people always get the updated copy. And if they're not that. willing to abide by the rules in the manual, use this. Yeah. You know? you gotta go. you gotta go. So yeah. yeah, I love that. I love that. And I and I think that was the uh, again something I, I had to learn because when we do go through things, we, we, we think that we have all this love, all this support, and you get surprised when the people you thought were going to be there weren't there, right? And so that was hurtful when I was going through things. But at, then in hindsight, looking back, God it was showing me like the people that you were relying on were seasonal people, right? So a lot of the biggest lesson I learned from 2018 and now is stop trying to make seasonal people lifetime people because they're just here for a season right and they're supposed to get you what you need or get you to a certain place in this destiny right and then they're supposed to leave and so that was even another big lesson that I had to learn that everybody that I wanted to be with on my journey weren't supposed to be on my journey Mm -hmm. I'm gonna repeat that. Stop letting your seasonal people be part of, I'm going to add, be part of your permanent party, right? <laughs> because they served their lesson. They did what they were yeah. geared to do. And we often do that. We take someone who were, in, they're there to teach us something or support us in some way or whatever. And then now we want to make them lifelong friends because they helped us in our vulnerable state. And it's like, uh, no, they were there for that moment only. And then we wonder why we get hurt. Well, they're not meant to be part of your permanent party. It's time for them 
to go. And I learned that my own, through my own journey and my own life. And that's why I love, you know, connecting with my speakers and learning about their story because we all have a story. We all have reasons why we do what we do. And people connect with the stories of understanding because they're like, oh, I'm not the only one out there. How do I get out of my funk? Someone's going to be listening to this episode and they're going to be laying in their bed and wondering how can they get up and the biggest way to do like you did you actually started writing it down and turned it into something that now can bless other people so um for the listeners that's out there that's in that space i encourage you you know pick up leah's book because she definitely and all three of them are obviously have some amazing places that it takes you amazing journeys that you write about and i really appreciate you sharing that with us. So do you have any other words that you of encouragement that you can provide to our listeners? Yeah, so I think, well, I'll say two things. Two biggest lessons for me has been when starting over, because when you come to a place in your life and you're experiencing a defining moment, it will require a start over. Um, and so I have learned that instead of looking at start, starting over as such a bad thing, to learn to embrace it because when you're starting over, you're not starting from scratch. You're starting from experience, right? So you have learned the things that work. You've learned the things that don't work, right? And you're, you're taking this experience with you and adding to whatever is to come. And so as hard as it was going through the grief journey, when I look back, it, it also was a beautiful thing because I've grown so much. I, I tell my best friend all the time, I said, going through grief has changed me. And I always, I kid around and I'm like, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I think that it's such a great thing because I've learned to one, stop and smell the roses, right? I used to live my life like superwoman. Like I just got to get it done. I got to get it done. Got to get it done. And I've learned to just slow down and, and enjoy the journey and stop trying to be a sprinter and stop trying like just enjoy it but then I've also learned to just embrace what life is given right now like be I remember when I was in grad school and one of my colleagues said to me be where your feet are and I used to say what in the world does that mean and and then now when I think about it like just be where my feet are in the moment if my feet is at my kitchen, like, just be there. Like, why am I worrying about what tomorrow is going to bring? Why am I worrying about six months from now? Just be present and embrace what's happening in the moment. Um, and then the other thing I would say is, if you're going to write your book, one, make sure you've made peace with your story. Um, I always encourage women and even men to like, you want to make sure you make peace with your story so that when you speak of it, you speak from a victorious place, not a victim place, but also to like, don't let nobody discredit your experiences, especially if you're going to write a book that's about your personal life, because people will come along and people will say to you, oh, it wasn't that bad, or you ain't really go through that, or try to downplay, like, these are your experiences. This is your truth. Don't let no one discredit it. You only you were there in the moments that defined you. So don't let anyone discredit those things. I, I love that. And I appreciate those words. And that's super huge. And, you know, I'm going to even add the, the business piece of it too, for those that are, you know, starting a business and uh, wanting to go on that entrepreneur journey. You have people that are telling you, oh, that's not the right path for you, or you're not going to be successful, or why are you even doing that in the first place? And those naysayers are normally, they are people that either are insecure within their own selves have their own journey and healing that they have to do jealous of what you have going on um and are they just are people that they, they can't vision anything but their their job is not to vision things for you your job is to have that and bring it forth and then surround yourself around like we've been saying like-hearted and like-minded people people who are going to support you and help you grow help you elevate and continue as you're working and supporting one another it's about what's the next level and how, and so you have to bring people that's ready to go there and anything you do, whether it's your friends, a relationship or whatever, people have to match where you're going, not where you currently are, if you're on a yeah. journey. Yep. I so, love it. yeah, because uh, being stuck is not a, it's not a good place to be at all. <laughs> not at all. 
So what are some ways that our audience can find you, Leah? Where, like, where can they find your book? We're going to have the links as well. Um, so where can they find their books? And then how can they follow you if they want to continue to, to get in contact with you and different things like that? Yeah, so my all my books are on Amazon and Barnes & Noble's website. Um, they can follow on Instagram. I'm at I am Leah Michelle. On Facebook, I am Leah M. Forney. Um, I do have a Twitter, but I do not tweet. <laughs> but it's Leah Forney. And then I'm also on LinkedIn as Leah Forney. Okay. Or Forney, as I call it. <laughs> <laughs> you might end up adding that little twist and be like, um, hi, I'm Leah Forney. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I just I had like French names see anything I could possibly think of because people butcher my name a lot, but then they realize, hey, your name is French. And then I have people attempt to give me the definition of my name. Uh, I've been having this name for almost 48 years. Right. I, I, know I think what I know. It, I know what it means. My grandfather, yes, he is actually French. I know what my last name means. Yeah. So <laughs> appreciate that. Well, thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Decide to Move podcast. I'm super excited and thank my guest today, Leah Forney, for being here and dropping some great nuggets and really helping you understand how you can define your moments and making them to where you go from um, having anything traumatic that happened in your life to having going to triumph. Then finally, at the end, be able to reach your destiny. So thank you, Leah, for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for listening to Decide to Move podcast with Monica M. Bijou. If you're ready to grow personally and professionally in order to take your destined position in the world, then schedule a free clarity call at bit.ly forward slash call with Monica. That's bit.ly forward slash call with Monica or visit us at decide to move podcast.com for all links mentioned today and listen to previous episodes. Also, don't forget to subscribe and rate us on iTunes or your favorite listening platform.